In this video, I'm doing another installment of the John Joe Kelly solo stuff, or stuff found in John Joe Kelly's various solos, variations of his famous solo. And there's one that I wanted to do that focuses specifically on pops. So pops are where you're right up in the top here and just... Okay, so yeah, obviously been playing for a while you got pops and generally understand them but one of the john joe kelly ones and, and on youtube there's one where he's playing a blue metloff with kind of cool ford mustang stripes on it and he's playing and he's got the kickstart of the video is basically him with a and in this video all i want to focus on are the controlled tiny, simple, but clean motions of what he's doing. So first off, there's not much going on on the back of the drum, except that there's this simple motion. So from the 12 o'clock position on the back, you're only coming down to about halfway and back up. And that's like any sort of choke technique on the drum. So any sort of The difference is though, he's somewhere between playing at the hand and then leaving the stick up here and letting the hand just drop, getting this effect, which is a very flat sort of a sound, versus a more dynamic drop where you're playing just above the hand and following the hand down, which is more of... And he's a real master at playing between and knowing when to pick and choose between going following the hand down versus leaving the hand down. So those two different sounds. Here's, again, one more time, the hand being followed along the way down. Okay? And now the hand going down and then the stick not following it. cycling. So as the first part of the exercise, just go back and forth between following the hand, not following the hand. little differences here and there. Then build on that. As you're going up and down, back and forth, start throwing any sort of beat pattern you want. And then try to, as you're going, pop back up. So as you're going down, just jump it from here, maybe up. Or play with the different back and forth. And just let yourself do some free play with no particular time signature or anything. And the idea is this. something that kind of just creatively you can build on without just simply going back and forth between this. Now you can actually throw in with accents, open hits, low tone, and up. Now we get way more technical. So for those of you who've really worked on your doubles, 
we, what we want to get is a sort of tiptoey effect. Because at the start of that video, he's playing and he's sort of, he's really tied into the drum and he's playing. One tiny little bit out of that is that little digga da digga da at the top. That little bit there where he's playing. And I find what helps is that you just relax and let the relaxed muscles do the work. You know, I still find it difficult sometimes to do that because I'll overswing it. So it's hard to not think about it, to get in there to do it, and to blindly find where that sweet spot is. Because he's, like me, right up here with very little margin for error. Otherwise, you know, if you miss it, you're it's boxy versus hit the rim. So when you finally hone it in, and get that little triangle spot there to nail it. Try to overdo it and see where you can control yourself striking rim and striking back. It's hard, and that's a lot of it's going to have to do with just how the, the the bearing edge on the drum is shaped, and not all drums are equal in that regard. And for those of you who want to try it, I've introduced this a little while back in an old old video. Is the whole thing you're striking here and here, so you're actually striking across, so you're striking both bearing edge and the skin itself, and it gives you a really kind of cool sound. It's a cracky explosion sort of sound. So you don't just get the crack, you don't also get the, the pop, you get a, a really loud. And it does it for two reasons. You're also playing to that little tiny bit of air right there. But you're also hitting the rim, which gives you all the highs. And it's almost like that turbocharges that. That's pretty much all I wanted to show for this, that tiny little bit. So once again, start off by going back and forth between following the hand or not following the hand. And then trying to throw in some accents. Try to get those triplets in. It's almost a real sneaky sort of feel. And when you watch him play, his hand ain't jiggling like mine is. It's very solid. More jiggly than I, I'm way more jiggly than he is doing it. It's probably why it's hard for me to control it, but. Highly suggest you get a tiny dowel, a thin dowel tipper with a dense wood for this. The, the, the carry style stuff's not gonna work in this regard and ball end tippers are definitely not gonna work. It's actually kind of cool when you start throwing in the odd time signatures.
cool. Give it a shot. Let me know how it goes. Thanks and have a good night.